Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Corin, also known as the Kitten Choreographer, and I'm a teen with a passion for animal rescue and, in particular, kitten rescue. So, today's video is definitely not like a super planned out, well thought out, well researched video of any sort, and it actually wasn't even the video I was planning to film today. It was not on my list of ideas or anything like that, but I thought of it and I had the inspiration to film it, and so here we are filming it. Well, the first video I actually had the idea to film was basically going back and reflecting on every single foster kitten I've ever had, which was a big endeavor, and I definitely want to make that video, but I thought it would actually be better for a more end of the year roundup type of thing, so that will probably be coming more towards the end of the year. If you hear stuff in the background, that's Tweety and Smee. They're just being kind of loud right now, so sorry about that. But today's video is basically going to be me talking about my fostering journey, why I started fostering, you know, who I'm fostering with now and just that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. One thing I do want to go ahead and say is that I don't really have a plan for this video. I have no notes, so I'm kind of just sharing my story. It's more of a story time than a well thought out kind of thing. This is my kitty Smee. Did you want to say hi? Your sweet kitty? Sweet kitty. I think he just wanted to get to his bed over there and I was in the way so I had to help him get over there real quick. Before Smee kind of interrupted me, I was saying that before we actually start talking about my fostering journey, I think I kind of need to share a little bit about my journey with animals from when I was a kid. So I have always loved animals. My parents have always known that I loved animals. I'm pretty sure cat was one of my very first words, but yes, I have loved cats um, and animals ever since I was really young. I have had cats in my life pretty much from the beginning. I've made a couple videos kind of talking about the stories of my first family pets and I can link those in the description below. I actually plan to finish that series, kind of talk about the pets up until now and I definitely want to finish that sometime but who knows when I'll get to it and feel inspired to do that. But yes, I always had cats in the house. When I was really little we had an indoor cat and an outdoor cat. The outdoor cat was an outdoor cat because she hated being indoors. She was kind of a TNR type situation, but she was friendly with us. The cat that was inside Scarlet, my mom said that she used to watch over me. She would sit on the changing table and watch me while I slept. Not in a creepy way, in a I'm protecting you type of way. And so, I don't know, I've just always gotten along really well with cats. I've always loved them. I got my first personal cat when I was four. Her name was Mittens and I loved her very dearly. I'm not gonna go too in depth with the cats I've already made videos on. Like I said, those will be linked in the description below. They're pretty old, but they tell the stories all right. I just, I loved them. We got my second family pet when I was five. His name is Jewel. I still have him. He's like 11 years old now, I think. And then a few years later, we got Sunstream in like second or third grade for me. Not sure which one. And so we have him. And then when I was in sixth grade, we got Serena. And honestly, I've kind of known what fostering kittens was for a really long time. I kind of posed it as, oh, we should do this a, a little bit when I was really little. But of course, my parents didn't want to do that, you know. They love animals, but they're not, you know, super passionate about animals like I am. But they were just like, no, we, we don't want to do that. And so I gave up on it for many years, and I gave up on it all the way until, I think, yeah, ninth grade, when I stumbled upon Kitten Lady's channel. And if you don't know what Kitten Lady is, where have you been? Like, do you even like cats at all? But Kitten Lady is pretty much uh, the Kitten Lady, you know. She is the like queen of kittens and fostering kittens. She's written a book that many people lovingly refer to as the Kitten Bible, a book that I have read myself and I have it. But yes, I stumbled upon her YouTube channel and I binged watched a ton of her videos. I followed her on Instagram. And at first it was very much an, oh, I love the idea of fostering little kittens and helping them, but there's no way I can do that now. You know, that's something I'll do later in life, maybe once I'm settled down. <laughs> Because at the time, I did go to public school. I was in ninth grade, I went to the local public high school, and I actually was pursuing theater at the time. I was already thinking of plans of going to college for theater. I was going to dance or acting or voice classes pretty much every evening after school. Not to mention I was taking like three electives pertaining to theater 
or voice at the school and so I was just really wrapped up in that you know I really wanted to pursue a career in theater but uh, theater didn't end up working out for me I struggled a lot just at school because of social anxiety and I ended up wanting to drop out of school to do online school and at first I didn't want to drop out um, despite having severe social anxiety and just anxiety in general and not even being able to get out of bed to go to school some mornings I actually had to you know have some like benefits given to me because of my anxiety like unlimited bathroom passes so that I could take walks if I needed or even just like extra sick days but it still was really hard for me and I was starting to just look like at that point in time I just couldn't go to school and it's me realizing that I couldn't go to school kind of made me start thinking about theater and for some reason I didn't have any anxiety about performing in front of people it was almost as if when I was acting as someone else it wasn't as scary because you know it wasn't me it was someone else up on that stage a character but when it was in real life even just talking to people that I knew it was impossible at that time I did know that if I wanted to pursue a career in theater I did have to stay at school I honestly thought that Theater was the only thing I was passionate about. It was what I had to do. And then I found Kitten Lady and the idea of fostering came in and I was like, oh, well, I, I think I would love to foster kittens. I love animals. At that time, I had three cats and a dog. I adored animals, but I also didn't think I could do it at that point because I was going to school. I think I left my house at 7.30 and then depending on what class I had that day, didn't get home until after nine at night. So I couldn't have fostered kittens. And I thought I wanted to do theater as a career, but my social anxiety made me rethink. It made me rethink whether it was something I really wanted. Because like I said, if I had wanted to do it, I would have had to stay in that public school. And I realized that I loved the idea of being a star, but the actual process of getting that, the auditions, the rehearsals, all of that, I didn't think it was for me actually, so I made the choice to pull out of school and actually pull out of the magnet program for voice I was in at the time in the school and go back to homeschool because I actually was homeschooled in 8th grade or online schooled during 8th grade for social anxiety and I decided to go back to public school in 9th grade for theater purposes and then I was pretty much dropping theater. I did dance for a little while after that still but I eventually stopped that too. It wasn't my thing, but I pulled out of school and as I was thinking about pulling out, I realized that, hey, I could foster kittens if I pulled out. The only thing that was keeping me from fostering kittens in the first place was me going to school and to uh, classes all the time. But if I didn't go to school, then I'd have a lot of time to foster kittens. And at first my mom said no. At first she was absolutely against it. No, 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 we're, there's no way we're doing that. And then somehow I managed to convince her. And then I managed to convince my dad, you know, I managed to convince them that, hey, let's just try it out. Fostering kittens could be really good for me. We had it set up where as soon as I pulled out of school, I did not get foster kittens right away. I think I dropped out of school in October or November of my ninth grade year. And then I had to restart the school year over. And I don't remember when I actually ended up finishing that year. It was pretty well into the summer. But my mom had basically said, let's wait until January before we even apply to foster me. That was the yes, and I was so excited that year for Christmas. I asked for so many supplies for foster kittens. You know, I got my first thing of formula. I got a ton of, you know, bottles. And what else did I get? You know, I got beds and lots of things. Um, we got a cat tree for the foster room, which is my bedroom, the one I'm in right now. We actually have a different cat tree right there because that one got old and nasty and worn out. But yeah, that's when I started my journey. We applied to foster at several places at first because I knew that we were starting fostering in January, which is not kitten season, and there would be less kittens. So we applied for two local humane societies and a couple other rescues. Just as like, hey, we can foster. And I knew from the beginning I wanted to foster bottle babies, but I also knew bottle babies are the hardest to foster. So I was open to, you know, moms with babies and wean kittens at first. And that is some of the first things that I did. My very first placement was with the local humane society. And I had a pretty good experience working with them. It was a mama cat and her two babies. If you go back and look at some of my very first videos, you will see them. I loved them very much. I wanted to foster fail the mom, but I didn't. I get updated pictures of the two kittens sometimes because they did get adopted together by a couple of my mom's friends, but I, I don't know where 
me mama cat went that's one big downside to fostering with a shelter is that you don't normally get to meet your adopters at least the ones that I fostered through my second foster placement was with another local shelter of the like town right over but it wasn't that far away because it, was, it, it wasn't that far away, basically. And so I fostered with them and then back with the other Humane Society. I kind of just fostered with them for a bit and then I realized that I didn't, I didn't really like fostering for the shelters because I never got to see where my kittens went. And shelter workers are so busy that it just wasn't giving me the community that I wanted. You know, the shelter workers were so overworked that on a couple occasions they gave me sick, dirty kittens and they weren't taking care of them correctly because they're just so busy. And I was thinking like I didn't know where to foster because actually the rescue I work with now and primarily that I love so dearly I will talk about them more in a little bit and they started up right about the same time I started fostering and I wish I wish we had found each other from the very beginning because I would have loved to be with them from the beginning but I didn't see them when I first signed up and didn't end up finding them until a while later. The people that started the rescue weren't just starting rescuing, they'd been rescuing for a long time, but they just finally started up their rescue. Um, but I wish I'd found them from the beginning, but I didn't. But we will get to them and talk about how amazing they are in a little bit. And so then, probably about the summer of 2020, I saw an urgent plea for a foster home for two disabled kittens. Those kittens were Charlotte and Lewis. I posted a lot about them on my channel, and I still occasionally foster for this rescue. Sometimes I actually have a couple foster babies for them now, but this rescue is Kentucky Pets Alive in Louisville, Kentucky, and I will link like their socials down in the description below. They are amazing. I love them. The only reason I don't foster with them as much anymore more is because they are in Louisville and I am in Lexington which is about an hour and a half away and so it is kind of a distance to get to the vets and the adoption events they do work with a vet in Lexington so if we have an emergency we can go there but they do like all the space in Louisville so it's just, it's just kind of hard to get to them so I do foster with them sometimes but it's not the rescue I foster primarily with anymore I have nothing against them though I will say that I love them they're great but I don't foster with them primarily anymore because they're far away. And I fostered with them for a while and I was like, why did I ever foster with a shelter? I love fostering with a rescue so much more. There's so much more community, you know, the leaders of the rescues are there for advice and they just seem to care so much about the kittens. And I'm not hating on shelter workers. I'm just saying that they are very overworked and with privately owned rescues, they can limit themselves. They can, um, stop intakes when they have too many. And that is something the government-owned shelters just cannot do, unfortunately. So I fostered with them for a while. I foster primarily disabled kittens and moms with babies with them. Yeah, then I... I ended up first hearing about the rescue that I love so much and work with now in summer, um, pretty soon after I'd actually started working with Kentucky Pets Alive. And I loved the sound of them, but I really liked working with Kentucky Pets Alive at the time. The distance didn't bother me then. Kind of bothers me a bit now, but it didn't bother me then as much. And I kind of found like a Facebook mutual of someone that fostered through the rescue that I love, Itty Bitty Kitten Rescue, based out of Lexington, Kentucky. I will link all their socials down below too. I love them, I adore them so much. And she reached out to me saying she was a foster with this rescue and she loved the work that I did and that I should foster for them. And I basically said like, I would love to, but at this time I'm really invested in the rescue I already foster for. But I did go to a point where the distance was bothering me a bit. We were having a really hard time just working out how to get the kittens in for their surgeries in Louisville and also just taking them to adoption events pretty frequently. So we were looking for an option in Lexington. And that's when I remembered them and reached out back to them and I got in contact with them. And it, it's kind of funny because when I first got on call with the leader, the president of that rescue, she was like, oh, you like fostering bottle babies. That's cool. But um, I'm not sure. I don't really give bottle babies out all the time. I really like my tiny babies. And I know her now. She loves throwing kittens at me. <laughs> but I do think it was very much, oh, she didn't know me. I'm this random teenager that called and said that I like to foster bottle babies. <laughs> of course, she's just not going to give me tiny bottle babies. But we talked on the phone for quite a long time, probably an hour and a half, which I thought was really strange at the time. Now we love chatting. We love chatting. I'll call her all the time. But yeah, and she ended up uh, saying come over tonight and pick up bottle babies. So I got my first bottle babies with them. I think they were Nova, Orion, and Aurora. 
me. What are you doing, sir? And I ended up giving them up before adoption age so that I could take more bottle babies. I have since stopped doing that. I keep my kittens through adoption age so I can have a mental break between bottle babies. I need that break. I need the few week break from when kittens are weaned to their adopted and get more babies. I just, look, I need the break. I need the sleep. And I've been fostering with them pretty much ever since. And I did foster with an independent rescuer for a short period of time. I did, um, cut ties with her just because some of our practices in spaying and different types of vet care weren't exactly lined up and I just decided that I would prefer to work with the rescue that I'm with right now. I'm actually getting more bottle babies with them tomorrow and then I'm going and picking up my incubator from the the rescue director's house because she borrowed it from me because she has so many kittens right now. Yeah, there are three incubators in the rescue. Mine and then she has two. She had loaned one to another bottle feeder that we have. Had one, but then needed another one because she had another litter that she had to put in there. It's crazy. Kitten season has been insane. It's been so scary. But I'm gonna get some more now. But yeah, my fostering journey can be summed up pretty much in I've always loved kittens and then I found Kittenly and inspiration and then I started fostering eventually. And I think a lot of people see fostering as something so hard and unachievable. And yes, it is hard, but it's so amazing. I say pretty frequently that fostering is one of the best things that has ever happened to me. The joy I get from kittens is so immense. It is so amazing and I love kittens. I found my best friend, Smee from fostering kittens. Okay, my card just got full and I had to delete some stuff, so we're back. And yeah, I found some great mentors and it's just been so amazing. Highly, highly recommend fostering. And this video might not have been as informative as others, but I hope you still enjoyed it. So yes, that is my fostering journey. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more kitten-related content. I upload on Sundays and Wednesdays if I can, and if I can't, then I upload whenever I want to. Also, please make sure to leave any thoughts or questions that you have down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching again and goodbye!